Hello, this is my lecture on music and climate change. I am recording this presentation during the COP27 in, in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. Uh, the, some of the ideas in the presentation were taken uh, from a radio program uh, called Crescendo on uh, Nugum FM by Professor Rasha Tunum of the Faculty of Music Education, Helwan University. Johnson is uh, part of a growing number of musicians who are using their celebrity to cast a spotlight on climate change, pollution, species loss, and other environmental perils. Music and advocacy have a long history together. Johnson recently told the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, as a music community gathered around an artist or music event, fans have a powerful voice to promote environmental issues such as climate action, plastic waste reduction, and food security. Reverb is uh, a leading group for green music movement since 2004. And the artists themselves can play a key role in progressing environmental advocacy since 2019. UNEP has partnered with nonprofit Reverb, which works with musicians, organizers, venues, and fans to green the live music industry. Since its founding in 2004, Reverb has helped to eliminate over 288,000 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. While the music industry doesn't have the biggest footprint of all the industries in the world, it may have the biggest reach of many industries in the world. Says Tanner Watt, Reverb Director of Partnership and Development, if fans will change the way they dress or the way they cut hair because their favorite artist does, maybe fans will adopt simple solutions to environmental crisis. What is music industry climate impact? The first is plastic waste from physical music mediums and merchandise. The old school music recording mediums, including vinyl and CDs, are again garnering popularity with the new generation of music lovers. A single record made from plastic can take up to 1,000 years to fully decompose in a landfill. Also, its production consumes large amounts of energy. A second issue is carbon emissions from live tours and streaming. Data centers and cloud services need power and cooling. As a result, they consume 1% of global electricity and generate over uh, 350,000 tons of greenhouse gases emissions per year. The carbon footprint of our gadgets, the internet, and the system supporting them account for 3.7% of global emissions. This equals airline industry's share. Next is the problem of live music. Artists tour worldwide on planes and transport their equipment by trucks and buses, and the fans follow them. The result is an excessive carbon footprint. Live music generates around 400,000 tons of greenhouse gases emissions annually in the United Kingdom alone. Moreover, today, the average touring DJ emits 35 tons of CO2 annually. This is over 17 times higher than the recommended carbon budget of approximately two tons of CO2 per individual. This beautiful uh, bar chart shows the uh, annual CO2 emissions for uh, top 100% EU household air travel compared to uh, the 100 least traveled DJs and the 100 most traveled DJs where a maximum of 88 tons of CO2 is emissioned. 
how to reduce music industry's climate impact. Uh, reducing the climate impact of music industry is possible through coordinated efforts from all involved groups. The involved groups are musicians, musicians, and bands should stop launching albums on all possible physical mediums to expand their profit streams. Furthermore, they should consider the entire live touring process from organization to execution. Next is the producers and industry organizations where music companies, producers and promoters have the most extensive resources to drive change and should be the engine behind the music industry's decarbonization. In December 2021, Sony and Warner started leading by example by signing a climate crisis pact. The alliance pledges to reduce the music industry's climate impact caused by artists touring worldwide and requires all members to commit to net zero by the year 2050. Fans and individuals, they also play a role. Music lovers should embrace greener ways of consuming music in terms of physical assets. This means owning less or aiming to recycle, reuse, gift or resell their album copies. Fans should also pressure their favorite musicians to change how they sell their music tour and produce merchandise. Streaming giants uh, should migrate to greener data centers and increase the use of renewable energy in their operations. The Google Cloud Platform, for example, states that it is carbon neutral and intends to power all of its data centers with clean energy by the year 2030. In 2019, Spotify migrated to the Google Cloud as of the year 2020. Amazon Web Services, the home of Apple Music, powers 65 of its operations with renewable energy. The following is four musical examples uh, that I am sure you will enjoy it. The first is COP26 Act Now. It's a short and clever video uh, produced at the time of the COP26 to urge people to act now. They use Trout Quintet, it's uh, of Franz Schubert, to imitate the sound of water and fish and how the world will look like if we don't act. Now, all over in the world, we will only have desert and chaos. <laughs> Uh, Franz Schubert is a Australian, an Australian composer, uh, lived from 1797 to 1828, uh, and he, he is a late, uh, the, the composer of the late classical and early romantic eras, and despite, despite his short time, Schubert left behind more than 600 secular vocal works, seven complete symphonies, uh, sacred music, operas, in incidental music, and a large body of piano and chamber. Actually, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to ask you to listen to the actual uh, trout quintet, and it will uh, it will take about seven minutes. Enjoy.
This is so beautiful. Now, uh, we go to another example, which is allergy for the Arctic. And again, it's a short video showing uh, Ludovico playing piano with the Arctic, the Arctic in the background. It's an interesting piece of music, sending a strong message to save the Arctic. Actually, Ludovico Einaudi um, is an Italian born on the 23rd of November 1955. He is still alive. He's an Italian pianist and composer, trained at the Conservatorio Verdi in Milan. Einaudi began his career as a classical composer, later incorporating other styles of genre, such as pop, rock, folk, and world music. Enaudi has composed the scores of a number of films and television production. He has also released a number of solo albums for piano and other instruments. The next is a different environment altogether. Uh, it's a poem by Jane Hirschfeld called Let Them Not Say, um, is has become something of an anthem in, in the environmental movement. 
For Earth Day 2021, the Scottish eco-activist composer Chris Hutchings used it in making this beautiful and harrowing music video. The video shows photos and video clips of climate change impacts along with the poem and singing. It conveys another strong message for environment protection. This is uh, it, it, like more information about Jane Hirschfeld. It's an award winning poet, essayist and translator, and is the author of nine collections of poetry, two collections of essays, edited and co-translated four books collecting the work of world poets from the past. Uh, the composer, Chris Hutchings, based in Edinburgh, specializing in choral music. He has won several awards, and Chris is particularly interested in vocal music and in using singing to bring out new readings or hidden meanings within text. Enjoy the schwa. Let them say we won't. 
The last piece is Four Seasons, and this video shows the detrimental effects of climate change with voiceover and Vivaldi's Four season musical in the background. It sends another strong message to warn people about the adverse effects of climate change. Climate change has almost eliminated the distinctions between the seasons. Occasional violent storms of summer are now unpredictable natural disasters. Vivaldi's murmuring streams are left either flooded or dried out, and many of his festively singing birds have been silenced by extinction. For years, scientists have warned us of these changes. The youth has taken to the streets in protest, but no one seems to be listening. And that, a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. So we, the musicians of the NDR Elb Philharmonic Orchestra, strongly believe that music can make the impossible possible. That's why we decided to make climate change audible. With the help of sound artists, software developers, and music arrangers, we collected climate data from 1725 until today. The data was then programmed into an algorithm that rearranged Vivaldi's four seasons to reflect the change. The resulting piece is something no one wants to hear, but hopefully will make people listen up. On November the 16th, 2019, the Four Seasons premiered to the world at the Elbe Philharmonie in Hamburg and live on Facebook. Conducted by Alan Gilbert, the orchestra performed the altered seasons, making a powerful statement which cannot be unheard. This is more information about Antonio Vivaldi. He's an Italian composer of the Four Seasons. In Italian, Le Quattro Stagioni, a group of four violin concertos, each of which gives musical expression to a season of the year. These were composed around 1718 to 1720. The Four Seasons is the best known of uh, Vivaldi's work. Because the video did not show the beauty of the uh, of the musical masterpiece, here I am going to uh, play it, and it will take three minutes and a half.
I hope uh, you like the music of Antonio Vivaldi. Uh, I made this presentation to show the relation between music and climate change through four different examples, sending strong messages to protect the environment. I added audio clips of the masterpieces by the composers, uh, including Franz Schubert, Trout Quintet, uh, Ludovico Enaudi, Elegy of the Arctic, uh, Chris Hutchings, Let Them Not Say, and Antonio Vivaldi, uh, Four Seasons. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you so much.